What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today we are going to feature Kevin Sauer, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Manhattan, Kansas. All right, well, welcome back to the Hot Sauce. We have a uh, special guest today. We have uh, Dr. Kevin Sauer, and I am going to let him uh, introduce himself. We're going to go ahead and put him in the hot seat here. So he is got the mic, and why don't you introduce yourself, tell us how you got into the profession, what you did for college, your internship, and your current job, and just your journey. Go for it. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for this opportunity, and I'm going to break protocol for just a few seconds and just say thank you for this, Angel. You know, I, I, I have the pleasure of talking to many students and colleagues in the profession about leadership. And I think what you are doing right here is a, is a great form of leadership. You're giving back, you're spreading the word, you're trying to form inspiration. And I find what you're doing to be very inspirational because you don't have to do this and you don't have the time, but you find the time. So uh, applaud, I, I applaud you greatly because again, this is leadership right here. Hey, um, I, I appreciate that, thank you. Certainly, certainly. Um, again, it's wonderful to be here. I, I'm just Kevin Sauer, and currently I'm a professor at Kansas State University in the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas. If you're ever in the area, come by, say hi. We'd love to show you around. I also co-direct the National Center for Research in Child Nutrition Programs. And I say that because that comes back as a full circle element um, in my career. Um, I'm from Southwest Kansas near a town called Dodge City. So there's a, a real live Dodge City, Kansas. I went to Dodge City Community College. I'm a huge supporter of community colleges, first generation college student. So I take I take higher education, you know, very seriously. Um, clueless. I was one of those guys that was clueless. I knew I wanted to help people and improve uh, the health of others given the family history that I had witnessed in my own family. Uh, so I took some science courses. Some friends said, you know, you like to work out and stay fit. Um, have you thought about being a dietitian? So I, I ran to what we called then the encyclopedia. And again, some of your audience members might need to Google that, but that was a collection of books. That was the early day Google. Um, and I looked up the term dietitian and I thought that's what I want to do. I, I want to be involved with food and I want to help others and I want to improve the, the human condition for others. And so uh, Kansas State University actually came to Dodge Juco on a recruiting trip. And I just went up and said, do you have dietetics? And they said, yes, we do. And the rest was kind of history, as they say. I, I got enrolled. I really disliked several of the courses. I, I disliked the food prep courses and wearing a hairnet and wearing a lab coat. But I progressed through those really courses and started finding that those courses were actually the ones that I enjoyed the most because I could be the most creative and have the most autonomy and perhaps uh, cause the most change, bring the most change. So went through a coordinated program here and the rest were uh, a lot of ser episodes, if you will, of things you shouldn't do. Um, I went through the coordinated program, but I, uh, my first job out of school was school nutrition. No, never imagined, never thought that, um, enjoyed that came back and worked on my master's degree and worked in college dining, never planned that. Um, did my thesis in the area of food safety and then uh, went and worked about seven, eight more years in healthcare administration and literally got a call about a week before courses started in 2004. Hey, we need an instructor and uh, you came to mind and we don't know what it'll pay if anything. <laughs> so uh, I came back and taught some of the very same courses that, that I gained from here at this institution, I had no idea what it meant to become a doctoral student, but I went ahead and that added that on as an instructor. So I became a doctoral student after about 12 years in, in classic practice, if you will, and um, went through the PhD program, finished my PhD, stayed here as an assistant professor, promoted to associate professor, and then promoted to full professor. All things that you're advised not to do um, but it worked out for me. And now look, I get to direct research in the area and impact the area where I, my career first started in school nutrition. Uh, who would have thought? That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you for that. Um, next question for you. Well, I guess you kind of answered how you got into the, the academia. Let's move on to 
You were you are the current immediate past president for the academy. Anything you'd like to say about that? Like uh, what was your what was your experience and and just yeah, let us let us know. Thanks for asking. What an absolute incredible experience. And if if one outcome intended outcome of the series that you're doing is inspiration, I just want every audience member to know you can be the president of the academy. And the reason for that is I know the passion is there. I I know that the intent is there among all of our hard working members and credential practitioners out there. Um and then I I just want to say right off from the CEO Pat Babiak on down, the level of support to make you look outstanding as president is beyond anything I've ever seen. Um and I've worked with some very high caliber professionals in my career, but the academy staff always there, always surrounding me. past presidents members of the board giving me support that I never knew would happen um but an incredible incredible journey um ironically the election results were announced about a week after a certain thing we called the pandemic in 2020 <laughs> so you know you always have that viewpoint of a position like this of what you think it will entail and it's probably always a fraction of that at a pandemic into things you know there wasn't a lot of history to go on um but once again the academy and the members and um you know Linda Farr who was the president just ahead of me were so helpful and and gave me the support i probably never deserved but did but an incredible experience and i would say that the greatest experience being president is always keeping the vision in mind a world where all people truly thrive through the transformative power of food and every time there's an idea or a suggestion the academy and the board makes it happen Um there was I never found any level of stagnancy if you will always future thinking always forward thinking always member first and and I'm forever grateful for that the opportunity to meet with so many members probably because we were online and remote I had more opportunity to meet with with students graduates and then the numerous stakeholders uh with with legislative and policy um roles in their lives uh just an incredible experience and i hope everyone will give it consideration at one point in their career definitely definitely and i and i think sometimes people may not have the aspiration for president but i i think clearly this leads to volunteering and and serving a greater purpose getting out there and um you know getting more invested into the profession some people might work in a silo and they you know they're in academia or they're uh you know a clinical nutrition doing cardiac and this is all they want to do but uh there is a lot of people out there and I always enjoy we're about to go to Fancy soon it's like you leave with so much energy and passion cuz you're like oh man all these people are doing all these cool things i i love it so yeah you know graduates and students will say i haven't been to fancy what's it like and i said it's really it's not very easy to describe but but you will leave 4 feet off the ground you will be inspired and you will not keep up with the number of people that you meet but you know where they're at and you know that we're all thinking alike and we all have a common thread in mind and so i i agree with you it's a wonderful opportunity yes yes well thank you for that answer i appreciate that next question for you if you could do it all over again in your career what would you change and what would you keep the same what would i change um you know that's always an interesting question i i feel like i found the gem of the profession being in higher education you know i I think we we go to college sometimes and get our degrees and forget that whether it's engineering or horticulture or whatever the field might be there are practitioners who serve as professors instructors and advisors. I I kind of wish I'd known about that option sooner. You know, you kind of stumble and fall into it. I'm proud with what I accomplished and it was only due to the support of a lot of people around me and putting up with my dad jokes all the time. But yeah. uh, needless to say I I I wish I had thought about that opportunity earlier and sooner and and started thinking about the role of research and the role of education beyond PowerPoint slides. Again, it worked out, but I encourage my own daughters to maybe think about that step earlier given the fields that they're still going on into. Um if I had to change one thing, I would have found other mechanisms to improve my confidence. I'm I'm a worrier. I think that's given me maybe a competitive edge sometimes. I think a lot of people in our field are. And perhaps it's the the rigors that we expect in our field that cause that sometimes, but we never want to let worrying lead into poor health, you know. And so if if I had advice based on things I would have done differently, it would be that it's going to be okay. <laughs> 
everyone's going to do good. And there, there are just so many ways around you to do good work and be good citizens of this profession that if I could have turned down that dial of worrying a little bit, I think that would have been more beneficial. But in terms of career, vocation, and the pathways, always understanding more about those and embracing that there's so much you can do, which we hear quite often. Yeah, definitely. I, I would say um, probably one of the things that you're alluding to is the, you know, if you're on social media, you may see other people doing all these cool things. And then there's a, there can be a sense of jealousy or, you know, people are like, oh, look what they're doing or look what they're doing. And I, and I think it's uh, the old adage, you know, is uh, the grass is greener where you water it. And if you can find a home and do the things that you like to do and that you feel passionate about, you know, clearly you'll make a difference. And, and much like I don't feel like I'm anybody special, a lot of people may look to me and say that I'm special. And I'm just like, I'm just a dude from New Orleans just trying to have a good time and, and you know, live, you live our best it. life. And, and yeah. you know, that's just it. You're bringing value because it just is so instinctual for you. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you for that answer. Um, next question. What does the future hold for you? You know, when you when you're lucky enough to, um, you know, have the resources and support to advance your education and become a professor, you know, I think we're kind of taught that that's what you're going to do is kind of finish out. And again, it's it's there's I'm so honored to to be a professor and influence the future of our profession and influence policy through research. But I have found also that sometimes the skills that we have just as dietitians and that systems thinking combined with industry experience, combined with educating others in the classroom, um, securing funding and managing a team, um, there are a lot of open doors out there. So I, I'd like to think I still have some fuel in the tank, if you will. Um, my daughters will be graduating soon. And so I'm just keeping all the doors open. Um, I, if, if I leave higher ed, I, I will need some help leaving the classroom because I just absolutely, I love teaching. And, you know, but I think there could be other ways to teach. And I, I will say serving as, as president of the academy opens your eyes up to even more opportunities than those that you speak about in various sessions and venues. So um, I'm keeping all options open. I'm born and bred in Kansas, but have never been afraid to leave Kansas either. So we'll see. Okay. I, I, I respect that and I appreciate that answer. So the Final question for you. Any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? Yeah, keep being you. The spirit and energy that brought you here is going to serve you well. Um, start thinking now about not if, but how you're going to be an outstanding preceptor because we need to keep that cycle going and we need you to influence the next generation. That's what's kept us so active and progressive for over a hundred years now, is that willingness to not only serve our, the recipients of care and nutrition and food, but also ourselves and to help one another out. And then again, find someone in your life that you can trust to challenge you on, are you bringing value? Are you really progressing the way you should? And find someone that will level with you in a constructive way so that you too can find that person that believes in you more than you ever probably imagined. And those would be my, my three top pieces of advice. And then also we always talk about these soft skills. You know, I sit in these teams and we talk about what the next generation needs. And we always come up with this long list of communication and hard work and flexibility. And I always look around and say, but are we doing that ourselves? So, you know, humility, uh, being prepared to form an authentic apology, <laughs> being prepared to show gratitude and being prepared to give credit when you least expect it. I think that's what everyone needs in our current work life. So that those would be my little tidbits of advice. I greatly appreciate that. And I agree 100%. It is definitely something that, uh, um, you know, it's, it's hard for people to admit when they are wrong, or it's even hard to admit when they don't know. And the truth of the matter is that I, you know, I, I don't know everything. No one knows everything. So we just need to, you know, be good at what we're good at and always be willing to learn. And then we just be, we evolve. And whether you look good or I look good or any of us look good, it's just helping the profession overall. So you said it well. Yeah. yeah. So with that being said, thank you very much, Dr. Sauer. I appreciate everything you've done and thank you for, you know, serving. 
in the sure. in the role and yeah i have one more thing angel yes here in kansas it's almost lunchtime you know what that means what it's time for some hot sauce so thank oh, you there you go there you go well thank you i appreciate that I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.